<laughs> no, but I've not seen you. It's true. No, you are here, but we have, it's true now. You can remember. We last, you last. <laughs> no, you come when I'm not around. Yeah, can you help? What is that? A moment, yes. Hello? Yes. You don't sleep, woke up. Eh? Would they f yeah, they don't bring them. But would they now for serious matter? You would see me now over the air. <laughs> Are you go international now? No, I'm fine. I'm going to do my night So I need to get you back again. I'm going to do my night talk. I'm going to do my night Yes. OK, no, fine. Tell me, you know. I even do know you know. Fine, OK. OK, no. Yeah, I'm out here. So how is everybody? For me. Now, I even know of a case where a family sold the house to send the child abroad. They did not have where to stay, so they went to rent and believed that within three months, the, the, the child abroad must have bought another house for them. Those are still the dreams. The young man or whoever traveled absolutely believed with love for his family, knew that he's going to do that in his brain even within less than three months. Okay, those are the dreams. Generally, it's make a better living. Show this roof over your head. Or open doors for a better tomorrow. Change can happen with Vodafone Rewards. MTN. Everywhere you go. As an individual, I come from uh, the English part of Cameroon. This is uh, two out of ten provinces, the minority. We are not exposed to jobs. There is something in Cameroon we call the godfather. If you don't have your godfather at the top there, you will never get a job, irrespective of how qualified you are, irrespective of how intelligent you are. So this is... a. Uh, a worm, a silent worm, eating mostly the anglophones. I was born in Ginecom, in this quarter cellar. Oh, that was on a Thursday, around 3.30 p.m., as my father told me. Hey, Mami, mm -hmm. this should be you. Uh, Governor Yakumto. Okay. Of Bambala. Okay. We're having a party in Boya. Okay. Yeah. I was in Goundary. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yes. It's the end of year party, party. meeting. 
<laughs> okay. This is Reverend Father Woodman. This is Jacobs. Then the Reverend Father Groot, who was in charge of schools, was not happy with the way the boys and girls were mixing in school. So he ordered us to go to girls' school, Shizok. I want to see it in the context of ICTs, Information Communication Technology. Because once Ginicom was founded in 1927, the first Mill Hill Reverend Fathers came into Ginicom. In 1928, they opened the St. Anthony Primary School. And closely by, there was already a Catholic, a Catholic church. And so people had to move from far and wide and near to enter the school. And my research shows that most of the people who access this technology, who went to this school, were those who actually moved. They represented a new hierarchy apart from the social or traditional hierarchy that was found around the area. Uh, the tradition in Africa mostly is the elder child, boy or girl, goes further in education. Your textbooks, you leave for your younger ones. Try to get a job early so that you can continue to sponsor your younger ones. It's not the father that does everything. But that was me at the top. I was incapable of even feeding myself. I talk less of sponsoring the ones who are coming behind. I can remember when my dad got on retirement, my late dad retired. My last follower, his daughter, the last child, was still entering secondary school. So that was absolutely my responsibility. I couldn't catch up. I had moved over to Nigeria for studies. I had the opportunity to go out of Cameroon. So I suggested my younger brother who just finished from university and for sure will not get anything to do, let him get this opportunity to move out too. So fortunately, my dad had a house and my mom had her own house. We sold my mom's house. Assembled the money and then he took off for Europe. The hopes died. Because we were waiting for one, two, three, four months, five, six months, one year, two years, three years, four years. Sometimes you could only call back once in about eight months. And I started thinking, this guy is not serious. He knows we are dying here and he's just enjoying himself there. You see the whole of my compound with a motorcycle. In, as early as the, the 50s, I was I had bicycles. Like uh, the time I was in womb, the roads were terribly bad. I stayed there for three years without coming home. But I made sure that I sent something to my mother and father through the post office. Well, every village had one or two messengers. And they were responsible for all mails that came to the, to the village. Yes. No, it is quite different today. By telephone, I, I just talk with somebody. Uh, even personally, uh, uh, small pension, if I take from Bermuda, I fear thieves, I put it in express and come and take it out. <laughs> come and take it from here. <laughs> so you have a good knowledge of the phone. Do you have one? I have. I have an orange phone and I have an empty one. Right. This, 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 this is the one which is working. All these two are all dead. <laughs> this is no phone. This is the one I love most, but but uh, it's, it's not functioning. There was a time I could not I, I could use my money from for food to for telephone because when it first came everybody 
sometime two, I was spending about 5,000 francs a day for phoning. But at the present moment, if you only important things that I phone. So I don't see anything wrong with that. But uh, it uh, entails a lot of, it, 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 it causes a lot of expenditure. That's true. This, 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 this is my son's phone. All right. Yeah. But all the same, <laughs> the phone has brought a lot of evil because stealing has been very rampant. A thief, you can come out from the bank and pocket money here and somebody sees you, sees how, how well dressed you are. He phones a thief somewhere to pull that man out of the vehicle and get the devil out of him. And they will pick you and collect all the money. Yes, we, we are struggling. Our development uh, committee has struggled to see MTN. And it appears they have instead brought us village phones. Which it costs 120,000 francs. They come and plant it under your door and give you a phone. But that cannot help anybody because if one comes there, you cannot get network. So those village phones, it's only for people who have money. We need only network. So our uh, village development committee is doing all, in its, all it, it can to allocate them land free and even support financially for them to come and plant network for us here. There was, there, there, there was a one friend in Douala that just came here in the village, so we were sitting here like this. Unfortunately, he had, he had a call and he rings. Unfortunately, we, we, by looking, we discovered that there is no work around here. So we looked and we discovered that the whole this area have no work. I fought a phone and started receiving my own calls, making my own calls. Then later on, people started coming and looking for me to communicate also and started doing call box. I've been doing this for more than six to seven years now. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the first person that started this business in the village. Hello. Mm, I, have, I have so many connections because of this phone. That many of my friends now, many of uh, people in the village, that they are used to buying things from me because of, their, because of the connection that I have with them. For example, not even my, my phone. Yes, I'm close to him because of transactions, through phones. Our headquarters here, I have many con uh, connections with them because of my phone. Like one young man, who is, who is in Holland, like his father just died of recent, Mr. Wenfuan Eric Ba. I've, I've, I've been in transaction with him for more than uh, four years without knowing him. Even dealing with uh, money, all these things, I've even built a house uh, for him in the compound without even knowing him. He was sent back, repatriated two times. He took off for Germany. The second time he came back on repatriation, I called him and told him, it looks like you're not a serious guy. Me, I'll go there and do what we sent you for. So this time around, that passport, whether you think we look alike or not, I'm going to use it. Go pick up a visa. That was still to spend some money again. Mm -hmm. Now the noobs and cons of getting another visa, I don't know. But there were some people who were like specialists who can always sit with you and tell you, okay, give me two weeks. I'll come back with a genuine one. Yeah, yeah it was genuine because people traveled with it. They went through the airport and everything was fine. So within a month, he came back with one. I said, this time, me, I'm going. I call my family almost every morning. Every morning. I don't leave my house since I came here. One of the most expensive ventures that I do here is that I make sure that I call my family every morning. Yesterday I called. My son was in the hospital for consultation because he was talking about stomach pains. I called the hospital and I told the doctor that I wanted to talk with the guy. Immediately I finished talking with him, he told me that his stomach is not paining again. He gave, he gave him some few paracetamols and that's, he went home. Hello. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I remember. No, R, R. No, B U T T E R. Most people in Europe, they are stressed up because they don't have their families with them. 
you don't even know some don't even know their next like me where i'm living i don't know my next door neighbor to the left i don't know if it's a woman a man an old man or a young man who is living there you know but my my the other neighbor is a dutch lady who has been married to an african so we are more or less like she's more or less like a cameroonian she's she comes to my house at will we spend time chatting children come to each other it's a very good thing I feel test them. I don't fear because I feel always test the money. But then sometimes I not just want to promote that kind of thing. I need the change as well. Ashrif, okay, okay. That fine weekend. Um, I'm a tele I, I can say that I'm one of those people who really cherish telephone because my dad. I talk to my dad every day, twice every day. Or at if at the, at if it's that bad, I speak. I talk to him once. Yeah, my mom once in a while because they are always together. But oh, you know, okay. but everybody knows that I have that connection with my dad. Okay. It is so strong. But if we are together, if my, if my dad like we came here, we would have quarrelled maybe three times. Okay. <laughs> we never agree. We always disagree to we agree. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> You know, uh, usually during the cooking, you find children roasting their plantains because they want to eat with, um, with, the, with, with the new palm oil which has been made. It's very tasteful. That's why you find so many children around. Yes. So by the time I retired from service, I was really a compound here. This is, not, this is my compound I built as a teacher. My father's compound, which I'm owning, is in this very quarter. Overside here, it's not far from here. He left me five wives and more than uh, 40 ch children and grandchildren. So whilst on my retirement, I assumed that my life, I took my life back as a pure native of this place. I inherited grazing, grazing cattle from my father. My son is in America. I call him at the health center there and he will talk properly. If I go to the health center, I get him very well, fast. What are some of the things you discuss with your son? Of course, when uh, if if I'm if, <laughs> like now schools are going back. If I have no money, I ask him to send me some more money so that I can pay children to go back to school. Like I was sick. If I'm sick, I tell him that I'm in the hospital. He pay, he has to pay. He sends money. In Cameroon, it is very common to see people who will tell you that, okay, okay, I want this, huh? Eh? If you give me, if you give me uh, 5 million, 1.2 million, I will secure you a Schengen visa. Sometimes some of the visas are fake. And when they are fake, the policemen don't even notice it. The immigration police don't notice, notice it until the migrant has arrived in a host airport. And they, it is dictated that it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, a fake visa. I, I, I know several times. We have seen people crying in Charles de Gaulle Airport because they were giving fake Schengen visas. This is to circumvent the borders. But people are anxious to move, especially those who are economically downtrodden. They want to move, they want to make a living. Yeah, so embassies play these, these roles. I mean, very flexible roles. They can facilitate movement, and at the same time, they will not facilitate any movement. Uh, Really, the procedure to get through getting authorization to live here and getting through the permission to work is not within one year. In the most cases, and in my own case, it was not even within the first three years. And I realized uh, maybe because so many of us come in from Africa, the Europe governments have put in position kill these wild dreams that we bring from Africa. And it's done in a very polite manner. Before you finally get through this procedure to get permission to work, they must have squeezed, or let, let us put it this way, silence at least six to eight years of your life. You're not able to function because you are in this procedure. But by the time you start functioning, you don't get too much of this wild dream again, you know, like, 
Oh, you want to grab everything and send back home. Anyway, it's good. After a while, I come to realize this uh, system to put in place is just okay. Because uh, normally you pop into my house, you have to live by my rules. It doesn't take you a day to learn my rules. You have to learn to respect and live by the system of the people. To me, that's okay. Mm. This uh, Senegalese friends that came to visit. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Fitz Gerald Kennedy. He died when I just delivered uh, Patrice. Mm -hmm. Second chair. Here you are. <laughs> <laughs> 63. 63? Mm -hmm. And where was this? Bamanda. All my friends had further their education to Europe. Then I thought to myself, why am I staying here? Why should I be left behind? So I connected my senior brother, Dr. Yongba, working in Lagos then. They arranged a student's flight to, to take me to England. Then we got, we got to England. I lighted at Gatwick Airport. I left without a visa. I had no visa. I told them I didn't know what a visa was. And uh, they asked me where I was going to. I removed my admission letter and showed them. They phoned the matron of the hospital. She confirmed that they were waiting for me. So they allowed me to enter England. I registered with the police the next day. So when I got there, they were waiting for me. How come is the come? That is the issue. If I come from come and I get married to a Dutch lady, and we have two kids or have three kids, these kids, they straddle come and they straddle the Netherlands. But now you will see that come as a territory, geographically marked, is already shifting. It's very difficult to point. It. You can say, okay, this is geographical come in by middle class field. But how will you call the com community in the Netherlands? How will you call the com community in uh, Boya? How will you call the com community in Victoria? Or how will you call it in, uh, in Kumba? So you see that migration again, deteriorize. The areas go with that marked territory. But the, the areas exist, the communities exist. And so it goes with relationship to with people. Yeah. In fact, uh, yesterday, 11th of November, made me exactly three years when I came back from, from Cameroon with the MVV. Yeah, but the system, I had a procedure to pursue in court, and the court system is a little slow in it. When you go in for one procedure, you get an outsprack, uh, you have to go in for appeal, it takes you one year for an appeal. And uh, more seriously, the advocates, the lawyers here. Honestly, I don't understand what is going on. I don't understand the system. I just have to observe. Because you, you can be waiting for an appeal for your case to come up so that you're free to function. Mm -hmm. But you wait for one year. When the date comes up, the lawyer sends a letter to tell them, well, I'm on vacancy. <laughs> Who's children? That's my children. Okay. The first one. Yeah. Court worker. That's him, that's him. Mm -hmm. This is the one in America. Mm -hmm. How often does he call you? Does he call? He doesn't. He doesn't when even he call. got married, he stopped. So, how do you communicate with him? We don't communicate. You don't write letters? Not. When he got married, he just ended. Mm -hmm. They would not, I do but not before to... then, we had regular communication. He was even sponsoring Benjamin. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My brother, yeah. of, I mean my son. Yeah. Of course, it's usually you cannot. You can, if, if he was already a medical doctor in Norway, I couldn't stop him from making friends in Nigeria. How could I stop him in America? But I only warned him that he should not give in from 
marriage because if you accept an American girl and after the, the next year and I send a, a, a Cameroonian girl, there will be talk of war, there will be problems. So he never, if he got into any such involvement, he never, there was no promise, there was no, there, there was nothing. When the wife went there, she found none, there, there was no problem. No, he's married to an Indonesian. But from the time he got married, he has, he ceased communication. No, from, from here. I could not, I could not accept that. If he, if he got married to a wife, he would not come back. I could not have accepted that. <laughs> <laughs> I could not have accepted that. Okay. Mm. Then here, here, what did he do? Was in the military camp. <laughs> it's military camp, Amanda. Okay. If I meet somebody who wants to stay with me, and the person is in Netherlands, why should I move again? Just where I find happiness. Everywhere is hard. Everywhere on earth, there are problems. There is nowhere there are no problems. He told me to come and initiate his house traditionally, and uh, they promised about uh, the time. By that time, I was sick, so they postponed it to October this year, and I still doubt whether I will go. But if they have to force it, I will go. But uh, why spend all that money when I can have I have a uh, 5,000. If I had money, could I have been suffering walking this oil? Since morning, I've been sitting, basking, and the smoke going into my eye. If he gave me money, I would not be doing all those type of things. Why, why do I go to America only to see places and come, and, uh, and come back dry? I think that the trip to America and back will cost more than one million. But if he gave me one million, I'll be very happy. I'll be a king here. <laughs> Yes, they're the car, they arrive with a new car here. <laughs> <laughs> with your family. With your family. We have heard your defense. We have taken note of the faculty's report on your previous examinations. In consideration of this, we have decided to confer upon you the doctorate. Uit kracht dan van de bevoegdheid ons bij wet toegekend, volgens het besluit van de commissie hier tegenwoordig, verklaar ik bij deze u Walter Gam Kui te bevorderen tot dokter. Ten bewijze hiervan zal u het diploma door rector, secretaris en promotoris ondertekend en met het grootzegel der universiteit bevestigd worden ter hand gesteld. Ah, uh, we chose to come. We made these decisions to come over, but uh, despite the, the questions we hear from every, each and every other person, or if you find it tough, why don't you go back and things like that. Nobody, like I said, nobody wants to die now. If you have the opportunity to find out where is heaven and where is hell, heaven will be too full and there will just be an empty space in hell. Nobody wants to go to hell. It's my home. I love it. That's where I was born. But I think if I, if I have to, I'm still thinking if I have to live long and live good, it is not back in my home. No. I think the conditions, they don't favor me. I couldn't make it. There's nothing as sweet as liberty. And that is only found where you were born. That is where you find real freedom. You, you turn left, right, who you meet is another person like you. It's unlike when you are in another man's country, you're always identified. Even if you, no matter how they make you equal to them, but in you, you know, oh, this is not your place. So there is that happiness you push, but the real happiness is not there. Uh, the most enjoyable thing to me is when I talk with my family. I just pray so hard. 
that I get the opportunity to even visit them once in a while. Let it be once in five years. If I get that chance, I would. I would like to. That is the only thing I enjoy. But the only other thing that pains me or that strikes me, that awakens me, that I don't even sleep sometimes, or in a sleep, when I turn on the bed, the first thing that strikes your mind is when you hear over the TV, over the radio, we must make it hard for these people. They have to go back to their home. We must let everyone live where he was born. In, in, I don't, can, I'm not from England. I'm not English. Impracticable. It's a, uh, there is, I think the best thing United Nations did was give freedom for anybody first to travel and uh, to live where you want. The other clauses inclusive, provided you can keep to the rules and regulations of where you are. That is normal. But if we can get this opportunity to, to move and live where you can find some peace and comfort, I think that's the best thing the world has come together to do for the people who live on earth.